Um, our first guest has uh, joined us now. Whoa. Thank God I don't have to talk to you anymore. That's not fair, is it, Eugene? Here is the owner of the Ottawa Senators, Eugene Melnick. How are you? You guys, uh, you guys been fighting or something? Or yeah, you know. On? Yeah, no, I know. I'm well, trying to protect. I'm trying to defend the senators and Tom and Selmy and everything that you stand for. You Bob are just, lying. Bob is just picking on everything you. You own. are lying <laughs> like a rug. <laughs> <laughs> Melnick. He needs the weekend. Leave him alone. Yeah. Oh, he needs the weekend on Tuesday, Eugene. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> How are you feeling? Okay. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Good. Um, we got a whole bunch of things to talk about. Not that we're gonna. We want to talk about the um, the organ donation thing, but but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Okay. Uh, we've been. I, I was asking uh, my friend Shannon here about um, the arena complex downtown and where you're at on this thing. And um, he's 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 confusing. So can you tell us? Are you are you are you full steam ahead? Is progress <laughs> being made, or have you hit some road bumps? Where are you at, Eugene? Oh, it's um, oh, we were expecting uh, it not to be easy, and it's it never is. It's a massive, massive, massive project, and we're just getting everybody's getting in after uh, taking some time to reflect on what they have to do. Uh, that's with the NCC. That's the current negotiations that are going to be going on virtually, you know, pretty much uh, almost to the end of the year, we figure. We're Yikes. hoping that if we can get this done by the fall, by the puck drop in October, that'd be great. But it's, um, yeah, we're all in. There's a lot of negotiations still to to be completed. And uh, we're at the early stages of that. So it's going to take some time there. We're hoping to speed it up. We've got Tom now on board. I heard you mention his name. Yeah. And he's extremely familiar with, uh, you know, he built the old school. It was called the Sky Dome. He's built uh, ACC. Uh, he knows his way around these kind of uh, hockey developments. And, um, you know, I really needed him for that, plus running the hockey club. So we're well. We're now well positioned. We need to hire a couple more people, and after that, it's uh, it, then the work gets down to negotiating, and then we're hoping to get all our permits, and then uh, shovel in the ground, and we can build an arena fairly quickly. We think we can do it within 18 months, uh, once you have all those approvals. So there's a lot of. Um, um, I guess paper that has to flow, and um, I'm mm -hmm. confident. But does the site need an, uh, an environmental cleanup? It does. But we can start on the – the way we're planning it is to start with the arena first all in, like very quickly, because we have plans for arenas. And there's some multiple plans, multiple designs. We just got to pick one, and they can start. Uh, we have time for that, but um, that's going to be the first order of business. The rest is going to flow right behind, like right with it, but we're going to be very focused on getting the arena up and running and then the balance of it because that will be a real showcase for us. When you say the balance, Eugene, we're talking 50 acres, and this is, to, for people outside of Ottawa who may not understand it, this is more than an arena, this whole project, isn't it? Oh, God, yeah. It's about a $4 billion project, and just picture, you know, I'm here in Toronto as well. I'm just looking out at the CN Tower and the Dome. Um you know, this is like taking from Jarvis to Spadina, from Bloor to the Lakeshore. Mm -hmm. Rough, oh. eh, maybe not that big, but pretty close to that. It's um, wow. it's big, and it's downtown. It's just off of downtown. So it's a massive project with a residential, commercial, uh, open air space, uh, you know, the whole condos, the food and beverage, entertainment, and outside uh, possible bowl. So... Uh, hotels, uh, skating rinks, mm -hmm. you, know, you name it, it's a massive project. To put it in context for something that some people in this country might understand, what's, what's supposed to happen in Ottawa is twice the size of what's happening in Edmonton. Yes, it is. And, and, it is. and that's a, I can't wait to go there. It's supposed to be, you know, totally uh, you'll, off the charts. You, you'll, be, you'll be blown out of the water with what you see and what, and, 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 how, and by the way, how long it's going to take to finish. <laughs> that's, that's the patient part you have to have. Yes, uh, that's why we're starting with the arena and the rest will flow through. For anybody who's ever been in L.A., if they haven't gone to see L.A. Live, they're really missing. Forget about Disney. Go to L.A. Live. Yeah. Uh, that's where there are Staples Arena. I was there for the All-Star. Staples mm -hmm. Arena is there. You've got 25-star, not five-star, but pretty great restaurants. you got a skating rink in the center. you got the headquarters of uh, ESPN there. You've got so much going on. And Take a quarter of that, or half of that, and that's La Breton. But that thing is, you know, just unbelievable. It's, and it's a whole neighborhood of. Uh, it would be like taking a Tobico, 
all mostly Toby Go. <laughs> it's huge. And um, it's, oh, well, half of it Toby Go, but it's huge. And they did it right, but they have a population, I think, of uh, almost 10 million people right. in that surrounding area. So it's a little different than our little Ottawa, but, uh, you know, we're going to do our best. I think it's going to be gorgeous and beautiful, and people will come. Uh, other topics. Outdoor game. Uh, yes. That is on the agenda for next winter? Oh, yeah. It's... Um there's some things to work out. We're still, believe it or not, at the stage of trying to figure out where, you know, what, who, you know, what teams are going to play. Because there's multiple well, games. Well, the Senators. The Senators are going to play. <laughs> That'll be one. They, we, we know we're showing up. <laughs> okay. And uh, we are going to be there, and we're hoping Montreal is going to be there. But we need to f do final negotiations on it. As far as the Senators are concerned, we're in. We've negotiated our contract. Um, this is not a windfall, i got to tell you right now, for any of everybody's kind of realizing, hey, this is a great, great fan thing. But um, and that's why we're – that's the only reason we're doing it. So, so when you say negotiate the contract, you're negotiating the contract with the league to buy you out of a home gate? That's correct. And, and also, you know, there's some residual things that we have to take care of. Like uh, we have sponsors. There's conflicting sponsors. There's mm -hmm. sponsors that are already – paid uh you know their fees and what are they going to do so th but those we can manage the big contract of as far as we're concerned is done the rest is all dealing with sponsors and uh you know things like sweet holders and because it's it's different you know if you're a sweet holder at uh, in ottawa you what's your what's your cut in on this do you get a sweet well you don't but this is what we'll do for you so you're going to make sure there's nobody you know completely complaining too much and nothing so far we're and it and it's and it's at td field or old lansdowne park yes okay yeah that's the plan okay uh i you know where i wanted i was very vocal about it i wanted it right in front of uh, parliament hill and they couldn't get their act together honest to god they just didn't they said no we can't do it said, for all the reasons that we could have solved but i guess uh that decision was made at a, another level and we, um, I said, you know what, for the fans, let's do it, it uh, outdoor at, at TD or at uh, the stadium. And I just got a text uh, November 8 and 10 in Stockholm against Colorado. Was that announced? No. Nope. Good, because I didn't sign a contract. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm being told. Uh, October? No, November 10. November. November, uh, 8, in November 8 and 10 in Stockholm against the Colorado Avalanche. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so, I think there's a few things that we need to still negotiate there. Uh, I think I really want to do it. Yeah, I think it's great for uh, for everybody. I did the last one when we went with Pittsburgh, uh, got to Gutenberg and to Stockholm, and it was a blast. And I think anybody that went on that trip had a lot, a lot of fun. Players okay so with it? A beautiful place to go to, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, Eric Carlson would be thrilled to go home, wouldn't he? Yeah, the fact that you're saying it's both Stockholm, somebody made the decision at some level to say, well, we're not going to do, because uh, they were looking at Malmo as well. They were looking at Gutenberg, where Alfredson and uh, Carlson are from. Mm -hmm. and uh, But Stockholm is the big arena, and it's uh, where they get the best crowds. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your hockey team this year. You're second in the Atlantic. Montreal is, um, we don't know where they are, but they are um, not playing well. Uh, have made a coaching change, uh, and the story is you've uh, told your general manager, go do whatever you can, and uh, let's see what we can do. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we you know, if this is it, I mean, at one point you got to make the big big bet, and you go for it, and if you lose, you lose. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but, yes, he has, uh, he has that mandate. He knows not to move the, our future around. You know, that's what everybody wants, and that's not what we're going to give. So if it's a money thing, then, you know, you can't be so off the charts that we can't afford it. We can certainly play in that world. Um, what Are you surprised at the performance of your hockey team? Uh, and I would, when, by surprised, I mean positively surprised. Or are they performing the way you thought they might? Well, you know, you never know with these guys because uh, well, I thought that we were a contender uh, for three straight years, and it turns out we only hit the playoffs once and then got blown. Um I think I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised, that's for sure. But, you know, we've always had the talent. It's, it's, you know, you get one thing after another. You know, you get MacArthur, he's wiped out. You get uh, Anderson and, you know, with his family issues, it's horrible. And um, you, can't do, you can't do anything about that or even protect yourself. So 
uh, under the circumstances, and I think even generally, I think we've done really, really well. And um, I'm really pleased with everyone who's played. And uh, we just need a little bit. To, we need a baby streak somewhere in here over a 10-game 10, 10 period. Uh, and I think we're right there for to be in the playoffs. I don't want to be too optimistic, but I really believe we can do it. With the uh, owner of the Ottawa Senators, Eugene Melnick. Um, last issue. Uh, I don't think there's anybody listening to this program that isn't aware of uh, what you went through for an extended period of time. Uh, you got a partial liver transplant in May 2015 from an anonymous donor. Right. And um, it saved your life. It literally saved your life. Yeah. And now, yeah. um, now you are um, looking to help others. You've launched the Organ Project, which aims to shorten the waiting list. Um, but how do you do that, Eugene? How do you shorten the time that an organ transplant recipient, um, the, the time for them to get the organ they need? Let me tell you how to do it. If everybody listening to your program today goes to theorganproject.net, registers to be a donor, that's all you need to do. We wipe out the, the lines. You never have to go through the hell I went through. And that's sitting every day being told, no, today's not your day. And you see the little, you know, I didn't even realize. Do you know that hospitals have a floor that you send them to that the likelihood of you getting out of there is, is not great? Um, it's, uh, that's, I was on that floor. <laughs> I didn't realize it. And um, the, um, you know, I just found out that I literally, there was doctors that walked out the door, and when they were saying goodbye, they really meant goodbye. Mm -hmm. I only found this out yesterday because wow. they didn't want to tell me. And um, that's where I was. And you don't want anybody going through that. You don't want to be waiting in line. There's 44,500 people that are in line. Double or triple that of people that didn't get into the line. Right. So once you're in the line, then you wait. And you, there's like 20 to 30% of people in the line die. It's like you're sitting around. You've been waiting for, let's say, nine months every day. You find out, no, no, you know, you didn't move up. To, you know where you are, too. And yeah. um yeah, you moved up five spots, so you're now 183rd in line, and you're getting thicker every day. And that's you don't want to do that to anybody that uh, to go through that. So why don't we, for once and for all, wipe out the lines? Once and for all, have a big push over a three- to five-year period, and then after that, um, you know, we just maintain the organ donations at a certain pace, and we're golden. We never have to worry about this again. You come into the hospital, it's determined you need a transplant, you, they, they send you home, you do the tests, and you come right back and you mm -hmm. get it done. The waiting line for a kidney is 8 to 10 years. Mm -hmm. You're on dialysis. Talk to somebody who's on dialysis. They'll tell you it's hell. One day they're in the hospital all day, next day they're recovering. They get up on a Thursday, they go to the hospital again back to, to recovery. That's just the kidney. Livers, I was lucky because I was so sick. We did an appeal. Thank God somebody uh, stepped up, like 2,000 people stepped up and said, you know, we would like to do it. At the end, we had 200 uh, that were fully tested, and then we honed it down to 20 lined up. The first one was perfect. Uh, they did the transplant. The other 19 considered, and many of them did, say, you know what, I already thought it through. This is live liver transplant. Forget about when you're dead. Yeah. That's the ones I'm after right now. Um, the other 19 went on and uh, donated their livers to other anonymous people. Wow! And when yeah. you t when you talk about that, Eugene, we're not. <laughs> there's, I think, there's a little bit of ignorance in this. When you, you're not talking about your whole liver, you're talking about a portion of the liver that can regenerate. Correct? The, the whole thing. If you took two thirds out, it regenerates within three months. So the so the point That's is is that there, there are ways that you can do this when you are alive to help contribute. And I think that there's a lot of people that don't understand that. Yeah, what we want now, please, is we're, th that is going to be our second tier type of you know, uh, push, is to get live donations. Right now, all I'm asking for is to sign, go online, or sign it when you're getting, now you have to do it through your health card, mm -hmm. sign up to donate. And it's when you're dead, you are really dead, when this happens, you've got to tell your family, for starters, that, uh, look, everyone, yes, I want to be cremated, but however, before that, any of that stuff happens, I want to donate. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they don't know anything when, when you've died. Mm -hmm. And the doctors come up and said, you know, he registered. Nobody wants to hear about it. No, 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 just 
let's go. We're out of the hospital. And uh, that overrides even your will. Anything you have, it overrides it. The family can kill. Sorry to use the word, but the family can kibosh the whole transplant. Wow. If they don't know about it. Yep. Right. They just, the doctors just have to walk away. So all I'm asking for is when you are deceased, declared dead, mm. that they can take your organs. Or one organ. Right. Uh, get, you know, my daughter's signed up, and they're like uh, 18 and 14. And one of them says, oh, Dad, I just, I, I just don't want to give my heart. I said, you're not going to need it where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, I want my heart and my eyes. Oh, so they can see your beautiful eyes, too. Okay. But, you know, they just don't know. Right. But the fact is, is that that's all we're after right now is sign the card. Go to the website, theorganproject.net, and you can sign up right there. Whatever province you're in, click it. And it takes you less, give me less than two minutes of your time. Uh, do, yeah, it's less than two minutes. You guys should do it. To tell everybody that you did we it. We will. We will. And um, we congratulate you for the initiative. And um, this audience is usually pretty good with stuff like this. So I wouldn't be surprised if you got a little bump in your numbers. What is it? The organ what? Organproject.net. Okay. I couldn't make it simpler. Uh, My friend. There, there it is. It's <laughs> okay. the organ project. Dot net. I'm, I'm, I'm tweeting and it out I really right now. I appreciate you guys letting me say my words on this. Oh, it's our pleasure. It really, really is a great help. You're good to us. Uh, we uh, we hope to see you soon, and um, stay well, and we'll uh, okay. we'll talk down the road. Thank you, Eugene. And to you, too. Thank you very much. Eugene Melnick, the owner of the Ottawa Senators.